Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to today's video. I kind of wanted to have a discussion video regarding what is the best deck going to look like uh, post uh, ban list. Um, this is going to be before right, Rage of the Abyss. Um, so just, I guess, keep that in mind. But yeah, let's kind of just jump into uh, the video. But if you guys are interested in um, getting additional content and learning a little bit more about each of these decks that I uh, listed um, here, you can go check out my classroom in the description box below and sign up for, I guess, exclusive access to all of my um, behind the scene deck profiles, as well as any sort of coaching services if you're looking to up your game. Um, also, don't forget to check out Supreme Pro um, at tss1.com and use Pack 10 for 10% off. But of course, let's jump right into it. So uh, we have four categories. We have the best decks. We have good, but not the best, right? Can cook. It's kind of like rogue. And of course, horse vomit, which is the worst tier. Um, so you don't want, you definitely don't want to be um, in the horse vomit tier. But starting off with Fiendsmith Rescue Ace, I think it's good, but not the best. I think this is a deck that can definitely see some sort of meta relevance again. Has a bunch of ability to set pack row. Um, never really needed up up loses on top of his end board. Uh, can use the Fiendsmith engine to uh, you know beat the. I guess lightning storms, the dusters, the evenly matches uh, to protect this back row that sets. So I think it could be pretty good. Uh, then you have a Fiend Smith Snake Eye. I would say it's good, but not the best. The main reason why is because I feel like the end board is just like okay. Um, I think that like with the um, like I think like making like IP into SP is like fine. Maybe I'll eat my words here. Um, I see some people do like the Caesar IPSP play, which is, I feel like that's okay. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it could get um, interrupted a lot easier um, because with only one Ash uh, and then one Poplar, um, I think that like you're able to kind of like figure out your opponent's hand based on the way they sequence because those cards are at one and less punishing. Um, and also, like, I just think that, like, the Fiendsmith cards don't do as much in this deck as it did previously. Like, any deck could make Caesar with Fiendsmith cards. So, I don't know if Saint Guys is the best at utilizing the Fiendsmith engine. Um, so, yeah. I'll put the Fiend Link, uh, the Ubel deck as probably one of the best deck, if not the best deck of the format. Didn't uh, get touched at all. Can utilize the Fiendsmith engine to its fullest potential, right? In the form of, like, Sequentia into, um into aerial eater so the fact that it has access to like you know that is just like impeccable I, I think that is just too not balanced and then the fact that it has access to fan and nightmare thrones a lot of his bomb cards are, are maxed out still so i think this deck is going to be something that's going to be looked on uh within our radar for sure funny enough i have the fire king snake eyes as like one of the best decks the reason why i say it's like really strong is because of the fact that it has the ability to um you know ignore the face with engine in place of fire king cards uh and the deck is like really explosive i think that arvada let's say plays around nib um which is like a really really strong extender in the deck i think it's like really really strong in my opinion i just think that like the fire king cards allows you to like play around a lot of interactions and it sets up a lot of um interactions on your opponent's turn that's really really hard to deal with so i would say it's actually like one of the better decks um I would say uh, Salmigrate can cook. I don't think it's like that crazy of a deck. Uh, the fact that it only has access to Breathe and Princess but doesn't use like any of the other broken fire cards makes it like in a can cook category. I think the Grooting Fire Sprite's kind of like died down. I don't think it's that good. It's still kind of relevant. Tenpai is honestly one of the best decks. I think it's one of the scariest decks in the meta game. Um, you never really want to go second against this deck. Um, and it has the ability to OTK pretty much almost all of your half boards right so i think like this is like definitely going to be like something that you're going to have to prep for in your side deck to beat i think brandon is also like really really well positioned um i think the boards are going to be a lot more breakable now and brandon was already breaking some of the crazier boards in the meta so brandon is able to like go second pretty well and then the puppet lock is something that's just absolutely disgusting so i think the fact that like branded can um access like puppet lock is just so crazy um and brand fusion of one i think doesn't really hurt the consistency so i think it's good then i have like white first and cherry on um i think this is a deck that's good it's definitely not the best deck but i think it has a lot of potential in the format 
Um, it can play like a bunch of bestials. You don't really have to make um, like Calamity Lock. You can go for like, you know, Diabel, uh, like the Quasar, which is like an Omni Negate and just play kind of like super mid range. Um, it's like definitely like good enough to compete. Uh, might not be the best deck. I think the Whitewood for, uh, Forest Runic is still, I think, one of the best decks. Um, the reason why I say this is because, like, it lost a, like one skill drain, but it has access to pretty much everything else. The Runic cards are still full power, um, and you could play, like, Foolish Barrel Goods to send skill drain and add it back off of Diabells, right? So, all of really cool utility. Um, the deck is still definitely very, very playable and definitely very scary um and like i said a lot of the boards are a lot more breakable people aren't consistently getting to dsra so evenly match like that in that deck can like resolve a lot more consistently so overall just very good i think the toy box version is like worse than the centurion version so i have it as like i don't know like can cook i think centurion is like a little bit better to be quite honest it just depends on the format i guess and how what hand because so i'll leave it here banger show can cook i think like if you can draw shifter you're the goat but i think like there's just better shift decks in the format in the form of like tenpai pearly i think is definitely up there um probably put it like over here i think uh new war is still a threat and like i said um the deck can utilize breakers can play around chummy really well can work under shifter can play a bunch of board breakers it sets up like a pretty um nice board right now doesn't really play into the bisios that a lot of people are playing the field spell invalidates a lot of the imprims and veilers that people are playing and a lot of people are also going to be playing nib right so it's well positioned in the fact that like it doesn't lose to like the hand traps that people are playing it doesn't lose to breakers because it can make noir and i think like probably just very well positioned i would put it at good but not the best but like a very high good probably like around this level in my opinion unchained Smith, i would say probably right next to pearly um the deck is really crazy after the fact that it can utilize the Fiendsmith engine is insane. So it, even though it did lose prosperity, um, the fact that it's so good to use the Fiendsmith engine, I think is like really, really strong. Um, so I would definitely say that this deck is still really good. Um, so yeah, so I think that Unchained Fiendsmith is still like a really solid contender in the f format. Um, I was actually playing it um, towards the end of the last format for a little bit and I was able to like break a lot of boards and also like a Savage a really strong board going first. So I think this deck is like really neat um and i think this deck is um even with one shavara like you bell is like literally a custom card so uh, i think this card is just really really good hero horse vomit unfortunately sorry sam deck's not that crazy pierce and turn on probably not that good um i would say it's like can cook but i don't think it's that crazy Velmonica is unfortunately horse vomit sky striker horse vomit Fiends with Memento, I would say it's looking to be like around here ish. Um, probably like closer up to here. Can utilize the Fiendsmith engine really well. A lot of Memento uh, starters are like really strong. They can play through a lot of interactions. They can end up on um, varied disruptions, which I think is really important. And the deck can like play around Nib. Uh, it was already doing it before without Appaloosa. It was actually doing it because it was making double SP. And, or it would make SP in order to tag itself out in order to beat like. Uh, Nibiru. So I think that was really, really good. I think uh, Voiceless is also another good deck that like a lot of people forgot that could be strong again. It can definitely. I think this deck is like one of the decks that can like put up an Omni Negate consistently. Um, so I think this deck is like still up there. Melodius is like very scary. Um, I would also put it in like the same category of like good but not the best. Orange Light is back at three with Ava, so might be able to see something there. It can play that hand trap is like crazy. It's basically a gamma um i think ritual beast is one of the strongest um shifter decks in the format probably one of the scariest decks in the game right now to go first um i would say this is like one of the strongest decks and i put it as best decks because like it just uses shifter the best um and i think it's just like really really strong um i don't think i think that like this deck could actually take an event this year um and i know it sounds like kind of copium uh, but the fact that Ritual Beast has access to Protoss, calling Dark for Ubel, uh, and Branded is like game, calling Fire for Tenpai and Snake Eyes, and any Fire King deck is game. Like the fact that this deck has Protoss can be, and it means that when you, if you can get to the top cut with Ritual Beast, I think you're very well positioned to uh, pretty much like call whatever you need to, right? So 
I think Infernoid is in the category of good, but not the best. I, this is like, you know, like obviously with Snake Eyes and Fiendsmith, I, I would put it here just because of the fact that it, I think like has too many bricks to, in order to be like the best deck. So that's why. I know I have a lot of best decks, but I just think that these are like considered what I consider like tier one decks, like really, really strong decks. Uh, Millennium, this is a Sam deck, Gaming Puppet, Trash. Actually, maybe you could say Ken Cook, I guess. Fiendsmith Chimera. Let's kind of talk about this. I think this deck is also really crazy. Can utilize the Fiendsmith cards really nicely. The Sequentia can get access to Chimera. And um, the Quick Play can dodge a lot of like effect negation from your opponent. And I think it's just like impossible to like hand trap this Fiendsmith Chimera deck, to be quite honest with you. Um, I feel like every time you try, I try to hand trap that deck, that deck is just like plays through it. And even if you nib the deck, all the fusion monsters in the graveyard can revive um, other cards back from the grave. So I just feel like um, this deck is like really good. And I think that because of the fact that it can abuse the Fiendsmith cards, I think if you guys notice the trend, decks that can abuse the Fiendsmith engine are inherently just like inher like way stronger. Um, and because we lost Lacrima, you need something else that Fiendsmith can go into. And so, like, the fact that he can go into Burfamit off the Fiendsmith engine or go into DSRA on top of his full end board is, like, just the nuts. Say Frog, I think it can cook. I don't think it's, like, that crazy of a deck, but I think it definitely can cook. Mimigul, I think it has a lot of potential. I would say it can cook. Maybe if we get more support in Rota, it can be a lot better. I think Labyrinth is also really strong. Um, especially if people, like, play, like, the super high roll um, Labyrinth. Um, deck. I think that deck is still like very scary. You can also play with Unchained cards and Fiendsmith cards. A lot of potential with uh, experimentation and innovation could happen for the lab deck that could make it really, really nice. Like I said, you could play the full trap heavy deck, which is honestly a pain, especially a lot of people just don't. They, the trend has been like people just don't slide back remove anymore. So, like, this lab deck is just very, very scary. Like I said, cash, pure cash is just a shifter deck. Just not as good as the other ones. So, I don't really like it. Same thing with flu. Not really well positioned. Same thing with Dragon Link. Lost a lot of engine cards. Same thing with the Plant Link. Uh, Tier Element with Fiendsmith could be really cool. I think that the Fiendsmith deck um, with Tier Element cards can make, uh, you know, the card that can mill five. Mill five. You can also Sequentia to make um, Kaleido Heart, if I'm not mistaken, because Kaleido Heart is a Fiend. So, and that triggers Palorino because you're shuffling cards back from the grave. Um... I think there's potential like there's also like a 60 card grass deck that you could play with tier that could be kind of scary so i'll be on the lookout for this deck maybe some potential not sure um what you could do but i think tier cards are just inherently scary right you could play life sworn tier elements try to mill a bunch of cards um you know make minerva make vampire all that good stuff especially with like the you know with the pile deck so yeah and then finally, we have the Fiendsmith Musket deck. Like I said, it's, it's honestly just like a Fiendsmith Unchained kind of vibe. Like the fact that this deck can end on... Like this deck can go second really well with all the Fiends, the, all the Musket cards. The Fiendsmith card lets you access Yama, lets you, lets you access your uh, Musket engine, lets you access DSRA. Um, if you notice, there's a trend that like Tracked can't really be used to make Lacrim anymore. So uh, if you draw a lot of Musket monsters, you can actually use Tracked to make DSRA. Which is something that like can't really do right now. Um, like all, track second effect is kind of relevant, especially since we lost Lacrima. So I, I think that like um, the deck is like really good though. But I think the fact that this deck is uh, exceptional into like the breakers uh, can go second really really well. Just puts it in a good spot. Like yeah, but pretty much all of like these things. But um, I actually uh, am going to be working on testing all these decks that I have listed here. And if you guys are interested in like the deck list and all that good stuff, like I said, you can go check out the classroom for the the, the sneak peek release. Um, and you can also let me know which deck you would like to see so I can like start working on them. But yeah, I think overall, this is kind of where we're at. Um, I think you bell by far is the strongest deck, right? But I think it's follow up by all these other decks. Probably like, to be honest, like something like probably 10 pies like second. I think brand is like right here and then ritual beast is like one of the lowest best decks but yeah something like this is what i would probably fully you know decide on but yeah let me know what you guys think and then i'll see you guys in the next one don't forget to subscribe peace